hello and welcome to another episode of I Demand a Homestead. Uh, so today what we're going to be talking about is how to winterize your Warre beehives, okay? So you can kind of see I've got a couple of beehives back there. Um, and if you're interested in learning a little bit more about a Warre beehive, I've got a couple other videos um, on what the difference is between a Warre hive and traditional hives and then some other kind of instructional videos about how to feed your bees and that kind of thing. So you're welcome to kind of check those out um, on the I Demand a Homestead channel. But today what we're going to be talking about is how to winterize and get your um, your bees ready for the winter, okay? Um, so we're here in Ontario in Canada which is zone 5b um, in gardening terms so that'll kind of give you an idea of what our temperatures are like um, the coldest we get down to is about minus 15. Um, the thing that is one of the things that's different about the worry hive is is that the box is smaller than a standard Langstroth hive and that is actually really good for colder climates because the smaller space actually means it's easier for the bees to keep themselves warm and that's that's kind of one of the things we're looking for is to make sure that the bees are not trying to keep a big space warm so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off any extra boxes that don't have any honey or comb in them, all right? So both of these hives here have got an empty bottom box. I usually kind of make sure they always have at least one empty bottom box throughout the, the nectar flow season. So that way they've got more space um, and then they won't be tempted to swarm on me, which I don't want, okay? But I'm gonna take those out uh, the other thing you want to do is if you have any feeder boxes on, um, top feeder boxes, you want to take those off. So the purple hive, purple hive over here, um, is the my new hive um, that I got this year. So it does have a feeder box on. So I'm going to take that off. In my experience, the bees probably need about two boxes worth of honey and comb um, to get through the winter. So my yellow hive is nice and strong. It's got two full boxes. So I'm gonna leave it with that. The purple hive, as I said, is a little bit newer. I did feed them this year, but we had a drought, so they're a little light on stores. So probably what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of um, like a sugar fondant on top of the, um, just below the quilt box, which is the, the box I think you would have seen that's full of the cedar or pine shavings um, because the cluster will start down low as they're feeding and they'll move up. So having the, the sugar fondant there at the top, um, if they get all the way to the top using their stores, the sugar fondant will be there for them to kind of use as, as food um, until it's warm enough in the spring that I can kind of go out there and put more sugar fondant on if I need to. So that's what I'm gonna do with the purple hive. All right, so I'm gonna reduce it down to two boxes per hive and I'm going to also install, which is super important, um, this, which is a mouse guard, okay? Um, if I bring it really close, you can see. So, you know, it's interesting because I didn't really think, I thought, okay, mice, yeah, no big deal. I mean, not no big deal, but they'll get in there and they make a nest and it's, it's messy and it's not good, right? And I had previously used just little, like, pieces of wood that I had kind of like nailed in place because um, I thought you know that'll be enough to keep it out however I did lose a hive um, this this purple one which I then replaced from um, not a mouse but actually a shrew um, a shrew is is smaller than a mouse there's a few different kinds um, and they are insectivores meaning that they will eat your bees and I didn't know about them um, and unfortunately it chewed kind of through that wooden um, block there and got in and was happily eating my bees all winter and killed the hive. So I don't like learning lessons like that, but what I learned is, is that you need a metal mouse guard or rodent guard, I suppose it really should be called. And this is like this, you can't really, I mean, can't really, really see, but this is a really small entrance. It's actually less than a centimeter and that's what it needs to be in order to keep out the, the smallest shrew, which is the pygmy shrew, um, because that's, they can, they can squeeze in um, less than a centimeter. So this is kind of what you need, all right? 
Um, and if you want to know if your bees are getting eaten by a shrew, you'll be able to tell because around your beehive um, and maybe on the bottom of the, the box there, you'll find uh, decapitated bees or bits of legs or wings because the shrew will actually pull off the heads and then eat the insides and leave a whole bunch of kind of hollowed out bees. And that is the sign that you have got a shrew in your midst, okay? So those are all the important things that I'm gonna be doing today to try and get my hives ready. Um, the other thing you can do is you can, because the comb is kind of oriented um, perpendicular to the hive entrance, you can take the whole hive bodies and flip them so the comb runs this way to act as a little bit of a windbreak I've never done that, um, so I, I can't really say whether that's a good idea. I won't be doing it. I won't be doing it today because I don't like disturbing them that much. So I'm gonna probably leave it the way it is. Uh, but you certainly can do that. All right. So let's get started, and we'll see how we go. Okay. So here we are. We're ready to go. Um, it's about 10 degrees today. You can see me. Ooh. It's about 10 degrees today. You wouldn't want to do this if it were any colder than that, okay? Because um, you don't want to chill the bees inside the hive, okay? So, all right. First thing, I'm taking off the quilt box, which as you can see is full of shavings. And that's, um, that actually kind of gives some insulation to the bees and helps with kind of uh, moisture regulation, which is another nice thing about the Wari Hive. So I'm gonna start by taking off my feeder box. And here's my top feeder. So I'm gonna take this off and then I'm gonna quickly replace the uh, quilt box cover. So that's good. So this box down here is empty and that's going to leave them with a full box of honey here and a mostly kind of full-ish box here. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to take off this bottom box. That's off, and now I'm going to replace it back on here. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some sugar fondant. There's lots of different recipes for this you can find online. It's a solid kind of cake of white sugar. I don't hold it against my white beekeeper's vest. You can kind of see what that looks like, all right? So I'm gonna put a couple of cakes on there just below this quilt box. And that I made sure that I put where the hole for the, uh, the feeder was so that that way they can have access to it. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do for this hive is we're going to put on that mouse guard. Okay, there's a much better view of that mouse guard on there. And you can see those pins holding it in. All right, so that's really reducing the size of that entrance and hopefully we'll, we'll eliminate our shrew problems. 
difference in the height of that purple hive, um, purple hive to the yellow one over here, which I have not yet winterized. So I'm going to do the same thing with this hive as I did with this one. <laughs> not so easy to point when, uh, when you can't see where you're pointing. Um, anyway, the other thing you can do, if you live in a windy location, you can actually kind of get some strapping and kind of um, strap it through between the, the legs of the baseboard there and go all the way up and around and um, kind of use, use that to kind of hold it together so that that way it doesn't blow over. Um, we're right up against the house here and we're surrounded by trees, so it, it's not really that windy. Um, but if you live, if you have your hives in an exposed area, that's probably a good idea. All right, so my bees are ready for the winter. Um, I'm going to leave them now until sometime in spring or if there's any kind of times in the winter where it gets above 10 degrees. I'm going to um, maybe kind of just come and open the windows at the back there and see if I can check what their stores are like. Um, the other thing I will say too is is bees will die throughout the winter so every so often especially if you've got a, a warmer day um, you can kind of open up that mouse guard there and I usually kind of just take like a a coat hanger or something like that and just kind of clear out the dead bees that's really important because otherwise they'll get clogged in there um, and then the bees can't come out to do their cleansing flights in the middle of winter um, when it gets warm enough because the bees will not um, poop or pee inside their hive um, so you need to make sure that they're able to get out all right so every so often um, make sure you go there and, and clean away that entrance okay so that's it for today thanks for joining me on another episode of I Demand a Homestead if you have any questions about beekeeping or worry hives please feel free to post them in the comment section um, and if you like this video press the subscribe button and the notification bell so that that way you'll always know when I post a video all right, everybody, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.